hey there and welcome to a new video in today's video we will go through top 10 common sql errors and how to fix them normally when we write sql queries we come across a lot of errors it is not necessary that errors will only come for beginners even for advanced people who know a lot about sql error message will pop up and that is very common so let us go through some of the common sql errors and what is the simple resolution to fix them in sql so we will go through the first sql error so the first error will be syntax error so this is one of the common sql error that we will come across when writing sql so syntax error will appear like syntax error near from at line one similarly we will get messages depending upon the tool that we are using and the dialect message will be a little bit different but the common part will be syntax error and most of the cases even the line number will be available so it will be very easy for us to identify on which line that particular error is happening so the most common causes can be mistyping sql keyword forgetting commas or misplacing clauses this can be the three common reasons why we get syntax error and the resolution is double checking the query for typos and ensure sql keywords like select from where and there are more keywords like having close group by then like close then there are more keyword like exist not exist not null and all this should be in the correct order then only we will get the right result and here is an example for the same so going through this query we can see that here select name and there is a space after the name column we have age and from employees table now the error in this query is that name and age are two separate columns so we should be separating the two columns with a comma and when we have the comma we will get the columns name and age from the employees table in the result otherwise we will get a syntax error now the tip to not come across this type of error is to use a proper sql editor with syntax highlighting to spot error quickly so there are a lot of sql editors depending upon the dialect we can use such editors which will highlight automatically the errors that we are making and will help us resolve the error while writing the query itself rather than writing the entire query and spotting the error this type of sql editors will help us spot the error and solve when we writing the query itself so this is the very common first error which is syntax errors now let us go on to the second error which is the incorrect table or column name this is another common error so what happens is we will get a error message telling unknown column employee underscore id in field list and the course will be misspelling table or column name or using a column that is not present within the table this can also be one of the reason so we are using a column which is currently not available in that particular table this kind of error is most common when we create some kind of view and try to use that view in our data visualization tool or further writing query on that particular view this type of error is very common because we might think that that particular column is available in the view but we might not have queried that particular column in the view query so the resolution will be check the schema for correct table and column name and here is an example which is highlighting the same thing so this is incorrect because employee underscore id here we have three e which is not correct the ideal column name is employee with two e underscore id which will give us the right result and the tip will be always review schema or use autocomplete features and good sql script editors will have autocomplete features which can easily identify the correct column name depending upon the table that we are using so that can also be a resolution to solve this kind of errors now going to the third error which is division by zero error this is another common error that even advanced sql writers make which is error division by zero so the course will be dividing a value by zero or column with zero value which will go to infinity so that is the error that we will see and resolution will be adding a condition to check for zero before dividing so whenever it's zero we can replace that zero with the null and it will solve the problem so one by null will give us null only so earlier it was one by zero so now whenever it's zero we are replacing that zero with null and in that case one by null will be null so it will resolve that particular error so here is an example for the same here select revenue divided by number of item from sale so whenever the number of item becomes zero the value will tend to 
infinity but that is not correct so what happens is in the resolution select revenue divided by null if open and close parenthesis and here is the first argument which is the column name itself and whenever this argument is going to zero or whatever value we are providing as the second argument that value will be substituted with null so what happens is the query will become revenue divided by null which will go to null value only and this will solve the issue now coming to the fourth common sql error which is the data type mismatch so the error message will be invalid input syntax for type integer so here abc is not an integer so it is basically a string so that error is telling us we are trying to, to do some action on an integer column using some string values so the course will be trying to insert or compare incompatible data type and resolution will be use the correct data type or convert value with function like cast or convert so using appropriate function like cast or convert we can convert the data type when writing the query on the go and then solve this kind of issue so here is an example fix so the incorrect query is select star from orders table where order id equal to abc which is considered as a string but from this query itself we can understand that order id is considered or defined as an integer in that case here we will get this error that is invalid input syntax for type integer in order to resolve the issue what we are doing here is we are using the cast function and convert the order id column as a variable character column the error that we currently facing can be rectified and the tip will be to validate data type before querying or inserting any data into a particular table now moving on to the fifth common error which is missing or misplaced join conditions so the error message will be column reference id is ambiguous so this is another very common error whenever we are using multiple tables in a query this can very commonly appear in the result so the course will be not specifying the table or alias in a query with multiple tables and this will be more clear when we go through the example query and the resolution will be use table alias and qualify columns in joins so the example query is here is an incorrect query so what it does is we are selecting id name from employees table join projects and the join condition will be based on on id equal to project id so we have the query but here we haven't specified from which table we are fetching the id column and name column that is the problem because if both the tables employee table and project table are having id and name the query engine will get confused it does not know from which table we have to fetch that particular columns in that cases the correct query will be we have to specify an alias name for two tables so here we are giving the alias name e for employees table and for project table we are giving an alias name p and the correct alias name we are using in the select clause so e dot id and e dot name hence we can tell that we are fetching both the columns that is id and name from the employees table since we are giving the proper alias it is very clear now and we won't be getting that particular error in the final result and the tip will be to always alias tables in complex query for clarity rather than using the entire table name even without this alias it will work but the only difference will be instead of the alias name we will have to substitute the entire table name so it is more easy to substitute a small part or an alias rather than providing the table name at all places so this is the better approach now moving on to the sixth common error which is using group by without aggregation so the error will be like column name is invalid in the select list because it is not part of an aggregate function or the group by clause this is another very common error that we can see whenever we are writing some complex queries and the course will be selecting non aggregate columns without including them in group by clause resolution will be to ensure all non aggregated columns are in the group by clause that is whenever we have multiple columns in the select we have to include all those columns within group by clause also so that we won't be getting this error message which is column name is invalid in the select list because it is not part of an aggregate function or the group by clause and here is an example for the same so this is an incorrect query which tells us select department name there are two columns in the select clause apart from the aggregate function here we are counting the number of instances with respect to department and name from employee table and group by is based on only single column that is department there are two resolution for the query depending upon the requirement so here what they did is select department here they removed the second column that is name and then they are counting the number of instances with respect to 
each department from employees table group by department another resolution will be add the column name in the select clause that is department comma name comma count star from employees table group by department comma name so include all the columns that are available in the select apart from the aggregate function in the group by clause and then we will not be getting this error and the tip will be to remember that group by works on all grouped columns only moving on to seventh common error which is forgetting to filter duplicates so here we won't be getting any error but we will get to know that we have made some mistake when we get the final result so what happens is we will get duplicate rows appearing in the final output so the cause for that is not using distinct whenever needed and the resolution will be to using the distinct to filter out duplicates or even we can make use of group by to filter out such kind of duplicates so here we have an example query that is select a department from employees even if there are duplicate department from the department column in the employee table we will be getting that in the particular result in the first query so in order to remove that condition we have to use a distinct keyword within the close that is select distinct of department from employees table and in the result we will only get the distinct department meaning we will only get departments one time which are not repeating again and again in the result and the tip will be to use distinct carefully as it can impact performance on large data set so we should be judiciously using distinct or group by whenever we are writing a query because distinct can significantly impact the query performance moving on to the eighth common error which is forgetting to handle null values so here also it is not necessary that it will always give us some error message but we will get to know that we made some mistake when we have the final result and the result is not as expected so no rows returned when null values are present in the data so this is one condition when we have null value in the table so the course will be conditions like equal to null or incorrect handling of null values and the resolution will be use is null or is not null depending upon the requirement so let us go through the example query as well so here is the incorrect query that is select star from employees table where bonus equal to null so this syntax is wrong it is not equal to null instead we have to use the syntax that is select star from employees where bonus is null so instead of equal to operator we have to make use of the is close in order to get the right result and it can be the other way around also it can be is not null also that is depending upon our requirement we can modify the right query and the tip will be to use null value explicitly in the condition rather than thinking the query itself will handle the cases we have to always specify or think about such cases and handle similar cases when writing the query now moving on to the ninth common error which is cartesian product or cross join issue so here in this case also it is not necessary that we should be getting an error message but our final result will tell us we made some mistake so here what happens is returning too many rows because of a missing join condition so the course will be forgetting the on close when writing join conditions or joining tables and the resolution will be to ensure a proper on close exist in your join condition so that will be the resolution so let us see the example as well so here is an incorrect query so select star from employees comma department so here cross join will happen because we haven't specified any join condition or any proper join but in, instead what we have to do here is select star from employees table and giving an alias name e and writing the inner join we need records which are common for both table that is employee table and department table and we have to specify the right join condition here the join condition is on e dot department id equal to d dot department id so when we specify the right join condition we will get only required number of outputs or the right result in the final output and the tip will be to use explicit joins to prevent accidental cartesian product so the rather than writing join using commas or where clauses we can make use of the proper join conditions that is either inner join left join right join full outer join then joins with exclusion that can be explicitly specified within the join condition using the right on close and which will give us the output as expected now moving on to the 10th error which is query timeout so the error will be query execution timeout exceeded so why this happen is because we are querying large data set inefficiently 
meaning we are writing queries which are inefficient. The query engine cannot handle that much data. So the resolution will be to optimize the query with proper index, filtering or proper join condition. There are many more methods of optimizing query using different techniques and clauses. We can see that in a different video, but the basic things to optimize the query will be to write proper index, write proper filtering condition, write proper join and only use the right clauses when required. Don't simply use clauses like distinct group by then window function. Everything should not be used without any proper reason. So we can also see one example here, which is here is an example of an inefficient query that is select star from sales where year of sales date equal to 2023. So this is an optimized version of the query, which is select star. The query again can be optimized because instead of star, we can specify the column name which we require. So sometimes it is not necessary that we require all the columns from the sales table. So in that cases, we can only specify the column names which are required in the final output. So that can also be optimized over here. Instead of star, we will write the column name from sales table where sales between some particular date which will basically run the query faster than the first close and this can be more evident when we write bigger queries these queries will not tell us the complete picture but when we write bigger queries or queries which consist of complex logic during that time we can see that the query execution plan will be different when we write different queries depending upon the sql engines and the tip will be to use explain or explain plan to analyze the query and optimize our query so these are two clauses which will help us understand the query execution plan and based on that we can optimize our query so these are the top 10 common sql errors and the methods to fix them hope you like this video thanks for watching and subscribe for more such content thank you